here with the lovely Leilani Lee. Leilani, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm, I'm very excited and very interested to probe your brain. Uh, well, I'm sure other people want to probe other things, but that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> well, uh, let's go. I, um, hopefully I could um, satur or satisfy your curiosity that you have. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, first of all, I, I wanted to know, and this is just because of the, the geek in me. So I saw you recently playing Mortal Kombat 1. How big of a gamer are you? Um, a really big gamer, actually. Yeah, I actually am playing it. I'm 50% through um, the storyline, so it's getting kind of intense. And um, I'm loving it. I am a, I am a gamer. Um, my favorite game is probably Sims, but I'm taking a break from Sims okay. to play Mortal Kombat 1. <laughs> so are you, actually, what, are you, what are you playing on? On PlayStation 5. OK. Mm -hmm. Cool. What about you? Uh, I'm I'm still playing on my Xbox One, so I I jumped into Starfield briefly, but I just don't have the time to really get into that. I was playing Disney Space on the other day just be, just to get video <laughs> uh, for a, a segment to put up on my channel, Nerds Rule the World. Uh, but I have I have to, I've been playing Trek through Yomi, which I have to buy because it's leaving Game Pass at the end of the month actually no in about nine days so i need to buy that because that is just a beautiful game set in like uh feudal japan it looks like a yeah. a, a kira kurosawa movie i was like this game is so amazing so i've been going back and forth to that over the past year or so and i'm like oh i need to either finish it or buy it before <laughs> the 15th happens yeah, um, other than that i, I kind of dabble in this and that i've been playing bro force a little bit a lot of things with my schedule is kind of get in get out uh, sort of gaming, nothing where I am going to sit for hours on end because I just one I don't have that time. Time two, I'm an old man. I'm usually passed up by about ten thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Totally, definitely can relate to that. I'm usually out. I go to bed like around like ten thirty ish, but then I always wake up like around three o'clock. So it's the downside to yeah, it. I, un yeah, that is a downside. I, I personally, I usually walk in the morning at least. I had been, I'd gotten out of my rhythm. So I'm usually up at about 5, 5.30 and I go out and walk about five miles or so. And oh, in between okay. that, I'll stop and get coffee at Starbucks and do blog posts or edit videos or something like that before I start my day job <laughs> later on in the morning. Well, at least you have a good schedule like that. And it's really good to walk. Walking is like a secret weapon to like longevity and good health. I yes. always tell people, if you can't exercise, the least you can try to do is like drink water and go on walks. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, I totally agree. I've the water one. I get. I'm not as good as I used to be, but I still do my best to. <laughs> do you want to know a good way to um, make sure that you drink um, your water or the appropriate amount of water a day? How? Get get like a um, get a water bottle and mm -hmm. put like 10 a.m. And like just put like different mm. times when you should take a drink and mm -hmm. um and like motivating things on there so you just so you can make it fun and then you can also know how much you have to drink to make sure you're at least getting um your daily intake of water because honestly that is one of the um things that is really 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 important is water our body is like more water than it is anything else so right. it is really important for us to stay hydrated Right. Now, I want to stick with the video games just for a second because I have other things I want to ask you. So what was your first gaming system? Um, my first gaming system was a Super Nintendo. Awesome. Mike, I, awesome. Um, my grandmother, I lived with my grandmother when I was younger and um, mm. she was pretty old school. So instead of getting like PlayStation or um, like a Dreamcast or anything like that, she opted to get the um, Super Nintendo because that's what she liked. So it was Super Nintendo and I was playing Zelda, Super Mario, and um, Metroid, Metroid Prime. So you were raised up on the classics. I like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I actually still, I still do love those. Like I have a, um, I have a Switch, and I still have like Zelda and Metroid and Mario, all the games that I had way back in the day. Yeah, that online pass, like I, 
I hate paying like the notion of I'm paying a subscription service for these, but then I'm like, it's so cheap to play these. I don't really mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. And it's convenient, so, right? Yeah. Um, wasn't there, um, there was, oh no, you have Xbox. So I know that for PlayStation, there was like this thing where they were offering for free all of the play, the PlayStation essential. Games. Yeah. They had a collection. Yeah. They did yeah, that for just, a while, especially when you first that. got the PS5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only reason that I end up getting a PS5 is because I wanted to p play the new Harry Potter game. Did you have uh, you played that at all? No, no. I've heard good things, my man. I do a um, video game show over on Nerds of the World, and my co-host on that one, he's played it. Um, I just like look. I have Game Pass, so look. It has. It takes a really special game for me to buy yeah. it. Sometimes, like I bought the last game I bought, which I need to go back to, is um star trek resurgence it's it's okay. literally like set in the next generation era like it's like right after d space nine i'm like it's it's like playing an episode of the series i'm absolutely loving it it's so amazing oh nice that <laughs> but i bought that yeah, yeah it's it's voice acting and then they have spock in there and whomever is playing spock that voice he sounds like Ned and Nimoy, and jonathan frakes is in it too and i was like oh this is awesome I'm a humongous truckie, so when I saw that game, I'm like, I'm buying that day one, and I did. <laughs> nice, nice. I um, have you been watching the um, the series that they've been coming with on? It's on Paramount, right? Yeah, Strange New Worlds. Yes, I yeah. I absolutely love that series. That is so. Yeah. I haven't gotten to the Discovery so so much. I need to go back to get into it because I've heard it's it's it got a lot better after like season three. I love Discovery. It, yeah, for me, it was, I was always, how does this fit into the timeline? And and my biggest, for me, the biggest detriment to that show is I'm trying to reconcile this fitting in everywhere else because it, it looks so different. Mm -hmm. And I think with them jumping into the future, they were able to really stand on their own, which makes it seem like a better show for me to watch and for them really to stand stand by themselves as characters since we have a whole new sort of crew compared to uh, Strange New Worlds, where it essentially is, is the Enterprise before Kirk. So okay. they have done, in my opinion, if anybody asked me what Star Trek show you should start watching today, I would tell them Strange New Worlds because it is a great show for people who know nothing about Star Trek to get into. Yeah. Um, it it's not serialized so you you can watch one episode out of order and not worry about missing anything okay. and in my opinion i think it has done a very good job of really fleshing out all of the characters without being heavy on the drama but we got a little heavy drama in, in season two but i just think it's such a wonderful show and it looks like a modern sh it, it looks like if they made star trek the original star trek today whereas discovery looked very futuristic yeah. compared to strange new worlds and that's like this is that is such a great show in my opinion do you think that they were um that they created discovery with the hopes of um introducing it to a new audience that's what i kind of feel like and i feel like oh, it did because I, I know that the i agree yeah, yeah yeah i agree like i i remember because they they did aired the first two episodes on CBS. So I remember watching it. And that was at the time where I'm like, I'm not paying monthly to watch Star Trek. I'm yeah. I refuse to. And I, I didn't until until they took all the other Star Treks off of Netflix and everywhere else. <laughs> and then I think at that time too I ended up well at that time Paramount Plus wasn't a good deal even for the four nine a month it was and it just like I'm not paying for this for one show. Yeah. But it has gotten better, so now I'm like, yeah, I'll I'll pay the five ninety nine a month, and I'll get all Star Trek and this and that. I'm like, I'll do that for Star Trek now. Or it's I, that was their flagship episode or show. I feel like it was only yeah. available, yeah, and and that's yeah. when they launched. I totally forgot about that. That's actually why I got it to to watch it because I had read like reviews and people were mm -hmm. saying like, oh, I don't like it, but then people were saying. I never watched Star Trek, but now I like Star Trek. And I've always been in between because my dad's a Trekkie. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, I was like, let me watch it. It was like, let me watch it. And I loved it. I have not watched it s since the second season. So I need okay. to catch up and I need to watch the newer series as well. And I'm going to now that you just hyped it up like that. Yeah, yeah I think what for me, what Discovery got me back, I maybe mean, not back on the bandwagon, but back to giving it another chance was the fact that 
they introduced Pike and Spock in Discovery. So I went back and watched those episodes, and then there was that whole sort of um, go throwback to the cage, which is the original pile of Star Trek on Talos Four, and I was like, I. I it's so weird. I love the cage. The cage is one of my favorite episodes of the original Trek series. And I remember as a kid when they debuted it, because it had never been seen on TV. I think they showed it in like 80, I feel like it was like 88 or so. I'm trying to remember. It was 88. Cause I always remember what house I was living in when I watched it. Cause we moved like every year. <laughs> so it was like 88, 87, 88. And it was just like, it blew me away. Like this, like this is no Kirk. This, like, this is totally different. And I just love the style of the cage. And it just seems so it was Star Trek, but it seems so different. So I've always had a love for that. And to see those characters brought to life in, you know, a new, new millennium, so to speak. And it'd be done so much justice. And I liked how they fit that into the storyline of Discovery, those episodes I saw. And I'm like, okay, I'm prepared for Strange New Worlds. Now, just after I finish this, I need to go back and start Discovery from the beginning and give it another chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should give it a chance, definitely. And then when you do, let me know what you think, because I need to catch up. I will definitely let you know what I think. Yeah, it will motivate me to get caught up. Yeah, I just have to find time. Maybe, you know what? I might have time. It's coming up soon. We shall see. <laughs> do you give yourself, like, throughout the week, do you give yourself at least one day of the week to just, just for you? I try, uh, but with my, all of, well, I'll like this. With my all of my responsibilities and doing all the stuff for fun like this, I'm I'm very scheduled and regimented, regu- regulated, and then a lot of times I watch stuff for the the main podcast that I do, and I've gotten out of that because I've been supplementing with a lot of interviews that I've done, trying to get that content out to a different audience that may not watch it on YouTube, yeah. as well. But a, a lot of the Marvel stuff I watch, I talk about it. Star Trek as well, I've watched it and talked about it um, over the the past few months and years. So also as a matter of I'm not trying to make these things, these podcasts super duper long. I know how it is for me. I'm like, yeah, 45 minutes, that's long enough. Nobody yeah. wants to hear me talk for like three hours. <laughs> well, if it's a hot topic, you never know. Yeah, true, true, true. Very true. But I will definitely, I, a lot of times I make time, maybe when I'm eating dinner or something to that effect, I'll sit down yeah. and, and watch something. Uh, but yeah, there's always something to do around here. And I'm the one that ends up doing it. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally understand that. I have like five shows that I'm juggling that I'm trying to watch, and I'm not watching any of them. Yeah, so understood. I yeah, I always tell people, I I mostly watch YouTube. That like there are a bunch of shows like there they're literally like things on my list or things I've started. I just I haven't finished Star Trek. I make it a point to watch it finish till the end. Um, well, I will say I haven't gotten back into Lower Decks with the new season that started. Um, I don't know why I started watching the first episode and I'm like, I just, I wasn't excited about watching it for some reason. I think it was just whatever mood I was in that day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'll get back into it eventually because I've heard good things about Lower Decks and also it's always good to laugh. Yeah, it is always good to have a laugh. I don't like comedy, but then when I watch it, I always am like, I do like comedy. I don't know why I don't watch that. Mm-hmm. So let me let's move away from Trek. Like, look, I can we can talk about that the whole, I know, right? whole yeah, time period. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So you you were into you went to school for fashion, fashion merchandising. Um. So I did go to school for fashion merchandising, and I um. It was my passion. Fashion was actually my passion. Um, I wanted to be a fashion model, but then I was like, um, okay, so being a model, um, getting into that industry when I was younger, I was like, being in that, or being a model is fun, but there's not, there's no longevity. At the time, I felt like there was no longevity. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I love this world, and I love the world of fashion. So how could I be able to um, stay in that world and, and, and evolve with it. And through like fashion merchandising and designing and marketing, I felt like that was the route to go. 
so you design or have designed your own clothes? Um, I have not gotten that far. Okay. <laughs> um, sketching and like designs, yes, but nothing like too too like e- exciting. Um, it mm-hmm. was more so like um mer- merchandising and marketing because I wanted to get into um actually I had my own um clothing boutique, and I so I I went to start there, and then from there after selling other brands and building a following and building a, uh-huh. um, a brand, I wanted to explore the possibility of designing and distributing my own unique um, stuff. But I didn't, I didn't go that far. I ended up taking a different route. Okay. All right. So let's talk about that different route. Yeah. So how did you end up in the Adele industry? Okay. So um, I've always made, content and i've always been like a sex worker as far as making content um on OnlyFans, tumblr um creating like dropbox drop dropbox packages mm-hmm. and selling them through twitter and things to that nature and um i've been doing that for a while and then recently i decided that i wanted to um take myself and my brand more serious and and do things on a more professional um, platform. And that's when I got into mainstream adult work. Um, I have in the past, out of survival, honestly, I've done um, in the past like one or two solo videos. So there is work out there from a long time ago, but I was really, really young and I was in a, and I was in an awkward position and I didn't look at it. um, I didn't look at it when I was doing it as a career or, a means to an end. I looked at it as like um, something that I could do at that time to get to where I need to get, but I didn't really think I would make a career out of it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things I've noticed, especially, I would say maybe in the past three to four years, there has been in my opinion, a drastic shift with regards to trans women in mainstream. And what I mean by that is now you have major companies like Brazzers who are shooting scenes with trans women. You have uh, more and more, there's a stigma that has been removed from male talent working with women and and trans women, um, which I find very fascinating from a sort of uh, soci- sociological sort of standpoint, because I remember this is maybe 20 years ago when the last time there was a, a really big scare in the industry. Um, one of the individuals who, who came down with something stated that they got it because they had done a scene with a trans actress in Brazil or something of that nature. Oh. And um, at least that's the, the story I remember. I don't know how true that was or, or wasn't, but I know that had been there had always been, especially male talent, mm-hmm. that stigma between dating or doing scenes with trans actresses, where yeah. then um, you know, sis, and now that seems to be that gate seems to be coming down. I um, think that it is coming down. Yes. Yeah, because how, how do how do you see that? Okay, so um, I agree with you. I do feel like there's been a shift um, within um, the with within the creator pool as far as talent working with trans talent. Um, I think that it can be it can get better. There's a lot of room for more growth, but I think that right. with prep, more education, and just knowing that trans girls do sell and i mean they're hot we're hot trans girls are beautiful um i think that people are more open to being able to work with um trans talent and then i think that the more the more um male talent that does do that it it will make it sorry i'm just like all tongue tied about the situation so good i think that i think that um we can grow a lot more i do think Mm -hmm. that the industry has opened its doors towards trans talent and um and i'm excited to see it grow even more but for now it's way better than it was because i know that when i that in the past when i did do videos that is why i didn't take it as serious because i asked myself realistically 
where can I go with this? It's not mm -hmm. something that's popular. It's going to be hard for me to get work. It's not going to be as prevalent for me if I do it then. But lately, things have been um, so much different. And I think that, like, girls like um, Emma Rose, um, Aubrey Kate, Domino Presley, there's just so many different girls in the industry who have um, done the work um, right. to break down barriers within mainstream. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of trans performers, mainstream right. and on, on a content creator level that are really killing it. So I think that people are, I think the world's catching up and they, there's a lot more catching up to do, but I'm excited to know that more guys are open to filming with my trans sisters. Right, because uh, for a lot of years, really the only company that a lot of trans women really could go and work with was Groby. Am yes. I saying that right? So yes. yeah, there was like, so they like, they cornered the market uh, very much so uh, early on. And I guess in many ways, smart, smart, smart to do so. They were industry leaders in that. But they you broke the break. See, there you go. They did, even you, way back then. You brought up a very good point, though, as far as selling. How much, and, and again, I, I'd say that really in the past three, four years, and you know, what kind of world we've been in since then. Do you think that sort of explosion of not just OnlyFans, but that direct to consumer model that really, because everybody was home when everybody really became aware of it, mm -hmm. do you think the explosion of that really helped to push along those changes even faster? Well, honestly, I will say that um, trans porn and trans women in the industry and just trans women, period, have always and will always be very popular. As far as in the mainstream and people being more open about it, I think that that's what's new. And I do, right. and I do think that the pandemic, um, media, and you know, you know, I mean, everyone knows and is very familiar with the trans community. Even if they're not familiar, they think they're familiar because right. the media, the media, constantly discuss, you know, the trans um, agenda and things to that right. nature. They like to call it. Um, so yeah, but I do think that having having more um, access to be able to see these things and then it being more mainstream um, has opened the door for more people to look. Yeah, and um, it's it's pretty crazy. It's crazy because you did say something about um, talent being scared about HIV and that stigma. Um, I've heard that. I've I have heard that, and even even now. Um, there, there are still, there is still talent that will not shoot with um, trans um, creators because of that. But it's not mostly, it's not, it's not per se because of that. It's more so cis women performers sometimes, not all of them, because there's a lot of allies in um, the community. But there are some women who, if they see you shooting with a trans woman, will not want to work with you or, you know, try mm. to charm you. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. But um, one thing I will say is that we're all on prep. Um, I don't know, I can't speak for the industry as a whole, but I know within the trans pool, we all get tested every two weeks. Um, right. You know, we stay consistent with everything and try to be as responsible as we can, just like anyone else. So, and, and, and we have prep. So um, HIV is not as big of a scare, I feel like, as it used to be around the time set that you're talking about. When right. the, the, time, the time frame you're talking about, I think that there was limited, there was li limited education on it. Right. And I think the stigma at the time was that the LGBT community was, was the prevalent source. I read a, I read a, um, I read a, um, a statement the other day and, um, it might, it might be true. It might not be true. So don't, quote me, but it said that HIV was more rampant these days in the cis community than it is in the LGBT community, which is crazy to me. But when you think about it, it's because um, being gay, trans, and, and lesbian, all those things, we, um, we have a lot of sexual education forced down our throats. When we have to go to clinics to be tested and all these different things that we go through, we, you know, we're introduced to PrEP and we have friends who, who are dealing with different things 
So it really helps us to um, be more health conscious, um, sexually, per just pretty much period. Mm -hmm. No, that, that makes sense. And I think, I believe that is correct what you're saying. I remember and just, well, I've seen many things and it's just STDs across the board <laughs> up in, in certain Everyone's sectors. Just fucking, the culture is fuck, 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 fuck. Right. And I, and I, and I'm fucking too, but you, we gotta just be, you know, responsible right. so we can live to fucking another day. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of Pretty another much. day, <laughs> where you talked about before about, you know, seeing sort of longevity, you didn't see any longevity in industry before. Mm -hmm. What kind of, well, I guess, where do you see yourself in a couple of years in the industry? Let me, let me rephrase that. What do you hope to accomplish in the industry in the next couple of years? That's probably a better question. Um, well, for, um, for now, I really would like to um, continue to build myself up, build my brand, work with um, my dream companies, browsers, um, a couple other companies, um, build my profile, work with all of the other performers that I want to work with. And then as I continue to grow myself, um, I would love to get into mainstream um, entertainment. Honestly, I think that um, sex work, so sex work, the, you, so yeah, trans women being more in the adult industry is one thing, but also what about adult performers um, transitioning into mainstream um, adult or, or, or mainstream entertainment? It's so right. easy back, back then if um, you were an adult performer, it was a stigma. You were not going to be able to um, transition into mainstream anything because of, you, you right. know, but nowadays you can. Right. Because what, you know, Anna's done a couple movies, Anna Fox, and I forget the um, the young lady that was on Euphoria as oh, well. Oh, um, Terry? It's yes. Terry something, right? Yeah, and yes. she's a performer, right? Um, right. Was Cameron Diaz, Cameron Diaz, I was she ever, was she a, for, um, an adult performer or I don't believe so. Do you want to know another must... a trans performer who is um, currently in um, mainstream pop culture? T.S. Yes. Madison. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, good. I'm yes. That is my girl. I love her. I look up to her so much. Um, we're actually connected on social media, and so. Um, I talk to her as um, as often as I can. She's really, really busy, but I definitely follow her, um, her career, and I, I've always followed her career before I um, before I transitioned and when I was younger and still figuring myself out. I think that she's one of the first um, trans women that I was exposed to um, mm -hmm. on Facebook, of all places. She had just got some new weed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and now I see her. I see her everywhere and um, on everything. And uh, you know, she's on the song with Beyonce. Right. Um, she's on the movie Bros. She's just, dude, she's all this great, all this great stuff. And that's where I see myself. I feel I see her. I mean, and then there's other there's other women like Angelica Ross. There's a lot of women. Right. There's a lot of women who um, trans women who have broken barriers are now in mainstream entertainment. And I do see myself going that direction. So would you want to act or is there any other aspect of entertainment you want to go into? Um, I wouldn't mind acting. I wouldn't mind getting into acting, um, producing, writing, um, having a seat at the table and doing whatever it is that I'm able to do. I love everything. Um, I would want to be, be an, act, an actress and also um, be able to tell more trans stories. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of trans stories to be told. And, I feel like they need to be told. I feel like most of the stories that are told are, um, there's a lot of stories being told, actually. Now that I think about it, there's a lot of accurate pres or representations and presentations being um, put out there um, for the trans community. So, but I would love to be a part of that. The next time, the next project about showcasing trans sex workers or trans women, you know, growing out of sex work and growing into different avenues and just, um, just showing different lights for trans women. I would love to be a part of that. I, I think that's a, that story is, that aspect of the story is good, showing different aspects so that people understanding that it's not one monoculture. You know, yeah. they aren't, regardless of if trans women, trans men, whomever, when you have a specific group 
people tend to think that they're all the same and everybody's story is the same. And the more individuals you have that are able to tell their stories, the better education people get to see that, hey, they're just like you and I. A little bit different, but just like you and I. We all got the same struggles. Everybody has that journey, that path that they walk to get to where they are. Yes, at the core of it, we are human beings. And yes, at the core of it, we are human beings. We all have differences. Rather, um, our sexuality is just one aspect of every individual. And, um, you know, I think that when it comes to trans people, you are right. Getting out the different stories and seeing different perspectives perspectives and seeing the different shapes, sizes, personalities, and viewpoints within the trans community, um, trans women and trans men, it would it, it would make it better for society to, you know, catch up. Because we're out right. here. We're here. We're definitely here. We're just we're out here just living like everyone else. That's all you can do. Just out here and live. <laughs> so how is um how are things like within where you live at like how is the culture within like the trans culture is it um is it more low-key or i'm not really familiar with i the don't know um like i've i've had co-workers and i'll play this in my lifetime in the past 20 plus years i think is maybe a little bit longer than that I've met people who have transitioned um, pretty much in every aspect of my professional and personal career. Well, really, I would say professional first, um, because that's what ended up meeting a lot of people. So I personally got to ask questions and to understand people's stories. Um, and I think that's at least what is like my, in adulthood after grad school, at least three of the four major positions I've had I have either at one point in time worked with somebody who was transitioning, did transition while I, like I knew them as one thing, and then they transitioned to oh, something right. else or someone right. else. And even when I was working in academia, I worked with trans students to, because I was in student activities, working with them to start, um, a, I forget exactly what a club or something like that. Uh, so oh, I've, I have, in my press, I've, I've had various interactions uh, with the trans community. Yeah, so basically there is a lot of trans people out there. Because I know in, in L.A. and in the West Coast, every mm-hmm. um, everywhere. But then I'm not exactly sure how it is in other parts of right. like, like the East Coast. Like New York. Yeah, I think here yeah. it's probably, you know, it's definitely out there. Um, and I think now it's probably... Uh, as a bit more visible uh, mm-hmm. than, pro- well, I wouldn't say that. I would say, in some respects, and this is me personally, I see it more because I notice it more. I think sometimes, maybe back in the past, you didn't notice it or you didn't pay attention to it. Or some people just, you know, didn't realize. They, yeah, exactly. Because it wasn't something that was on your radar, because it right. wasn't something that was a daily conversation. Now, right. it's on everyone's radar. And so it's right. no- noticed. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's how we get into like the bathroom conversation, which is a new conversation. But trans people have been around the whole time. We didn't just pop up. It's been it's been going down. Yeah. Right. But that's I hate politics and I and I, it sucks. Um, just the, the, the politics when it comes to like the trans community is so it's just a lot of it's crazy. A lot of crazy stuff going on. Well. All politics is crazy, <laughs> especially right now. Yeah, I was gonna say actually, yeah, the state of the state of everything right now is kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah so it's not just limited to those issues. <laughs> no, no, it's no, it's not. I think that yeah, you're totally right. It's like if that's a distraction from other issues. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> because so we're just only- out here trying to live. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Look, we try to pay our bills, get some, eat some good food, sleep in a comfortable bed and have roof over our heads. That's, a, that's pretty much all we, we're trying to do. And honestly, these days, just those basics is really a big blessing because yes. the state of everything is just so crazy. And I always tell myself that just like walking around and seeing the state of everything around me, I always try to remind myself to um, be thankful because 
it's really hard out here. I think it's harder yes. than it's ever been, ever. I don't disagree with you there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, All right. Yeah. I want to ask you one final thing. Well, it's probably two questions before I let you go. Um, what fragrances are you wearing? Okay. Well, um, I'm wearing actually Burberry Her. Okay. And that's the one that I'm wearing. And the other one that I like to wear is Body by Kim Kardashian. But the only problem with that is, is that I don't think that she's selling her fragrances right now. But I bought a lot of them in bulk. Let me get the bottle so I can show it to you. I want to show you the sure. bottle. I don't think you've ever seen it. Let me go get it. <laughs> it's a little messed up because I've had it for a while, but this is it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's this cool. This is why it's called Body, yeah. So yeah, it's Body by um, Kim Kardashian. I love it. What about you? What are you wearing? I'm I'm wearing Ovation for Men, and I'm looking like I don't have the bottle right now because I actually have a new bottle I need to open. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So I need to unbox. So yeah, I'm wearing Ovation for Men. It's uh, a group out of uh, Atlanta, uh, black-owned uh, fragrance company. So I I okay. did an interview with uh, one of the guys from them, Sean. Um, one of the guys from there, Sean Crenshaw, a couple weeks ago. He's a real good guy. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Well. What is your last question for me? Well, that was my last question because okay. we're all about fragrances here. So I wanted to thank you, Leilani, for your yeah. time. Tell everybody where they can find you. Um, you guys can find me on Instagram. I am Leilani Lee. Um, and you can also find me on X, Leilani underscore Lee. And that's where you can find me at. You can also find me on OnlyFans, of course, um, if you're into that. So go ahead and <laughs> check me out. Thank you very much, Leilani. I appreciate it. Yes, and thank you for having me. I definitely appreciate you. Thank you. You guys, stay tuned for more. We'll see you next time. Bye.